Hi, and thanks so much for joining me for my June 2018 haul and favorites. Let's go ahead and just get started. One of the first things I picked up was by Nude Sticks. It's the Nudies. It's called the Tinted Blur Stick, and I got mine in the shade medium six. I've got a swatch here. It's a little bit on the warm side for me, but that's okay because it does some color correcting and then just provides a really sheer wash of color. It says it's a tinted sheer coverage, lightweight, all over face stick that blurs texture to have a naturally smooth hashtag no filter skin. I tried it a couple times. I do have it on right now. It is very sheer. It does have a really nice finish. One of the things that I noticed in summer is that I get a little bit more oily, so I want something that's not going to have as much of a dewy finish as I typically like, and this doesn't have that dewy finish. It is very skin-like, so I'm continuing to try it out just to see how much I can build it up. Of course, I do have to go in with concealer quite a bit in the center. As for the rest of the finish, I really like it on the skin. I think it looks really beautiful and natural and kind of undetectable. So if you have really Really beautiful skin to begin with and you just want to even it out this is a really great product uh, like I said if you have some other issues that you're gonna have to address with concealer then yes concealer is a must and I picked up another concealer uh, another concealer actually I have to go get it and I picked up something that's a 24 hour wear camouflage concealer so concealer is kind of the thing I've been really trying out this year and this is the beyond perfecting Super Concealer by Clinique. I haven't tried out their face products as much as some of the other lines out there, but I actually have a couple more Clinique things that I wanted to show you because I thought they'd be really specific for summer and the weather that goes along with summer. Uh, this is a, like I said, 24 hour and I, they say camouflage. And when I hear the word camouflage to me, that is more intense than a concealer. So here is a swatch of it. I haven't checked reviews or anything on it, but I'm kind of experimenting right now with it. It does have, again, more of an orange tinge, which is great for color correcting. I do have on right now. It's mixed in with some other products just to kind of take it down a notch. It is a little bit too dark for me, but um, like I said, experimenting to see if it really is 24-hour wear. I mean, 24 hours is a long time to wear your makeup. I never wear my makeup that long. Maybe 12 hours is what I would be asking for. So really interested to see the wear time on this as I continue to go through the day. I did experiment again with that a little bit at the pool yesterday. I did not powder it. And when I got out of the pool, I didn't put my head in the water though, but it was definitely hot. Uh, and it did stay intact. It didn't break up at all. So I will continue to experiment with this. Again, let me know if you want to see that in action. Happy to do that. Speaking of Clinique, I did pick up this Clinique Fit Workout Makeup broad spectrum SPF 40. I was going to pick up the It Cosmetics, um, the CC cream in Rich just to adjust a couple of my other current foundations, but then I saw this and then I checked the reviews and the reviews are quite high on this and I picked it up in medium and deep again. I think there were only four colors in this range, which is well, limited to say the least. I picked up these two because I thought they would look great blended together. I'll show you each of them one by one. And it's pretty thin. I mean, it's a messy product. You have to shake it. It's definitely a messy product. I've already cleaned, like this is a cleaned version of how this container has looked the last few times I used it. So this is medium five and it's runny. So be careful when you use this because it will be all over the place. It seems to oxidize a little bit. So the color that you initially put on is not the color you end up with. Here it is. It does look quite light. We'll see if it changes on my hand in a little bit. And then I got deep um, seven. That's how messy it gets. So it is not a, uh, it's not a very tidy product. Ay, ay, ay. It's like, yeah, it's making a mess. Here is deep. It is very caramelly, olivey. It does have a hint of green in there. So if you're olive, That'd be great for you. It's a little too olive for me though, so I will mix these, but not a half and a half. It'll be more like a two thirds, one third, or even less, maybe three quarters, one quarter, if I mix them. So we'll see how that dries in a little bit and I'll show you if it changes because this one definitely, that one definitely oxidizes. I wore this one once and my sister said, your makeup looks too dark for you. So yeah, that's too dark for me but it will adjust this to about the right tone. 
So far, I don't love it because it feels a little dry on my skin. What it will do is it kind of tightens, it feels tight on my skin, especially up here, and then you can see, you know, if you have any fine lines, I, c I could see them more with this product. It's not dewy. It's supposed to be more matte, but it is a little bit like tight feeling on my skin. Not totally sold on this, but I'm gonna keep trying it to see if I can find the best way to use it because I like the idea that you can wear it in the same conditions as if you were working out, which means you're perspiring and it should stay in place and it has SPF 40. I don't know, not sure on that one yet. Okay, speaking of SPF, I picked up the Super Goop Invincible Setting Powder in, again, two shades because nothing is really perfect for me. I'm either, it's either too light, which medium is too light, and then deep, which is too dark. <laughs> I've used these a couple times, and what I noticed is that the brush is not great. What it does is, oh, I can see it in the air though, it picks up my makeup, so it disturbs my makeup underneath, which I don't like. So what I think I'll end up doing is just putting this in a different container and using my own powder brush, although that kind of defeats the purpose of traveling with it, which I think this is made for. The color science ones, if you've tried those, that brush is much better, the container's much better. This one's kind of like inconsistent in terms of how the brush, yeah, okay, it's working now, but sometimes the brush either gets stuck in there or this thing doesn't retract. So not the best packaging. The color is better though. The color shades are better than the color science. Color science is a little bit pink on me. This has a little bit more of a yellow tone. So that's what I like about it, but not loving the packaging on this. It's okay. I wouldn't run out and buy it though. And then, more face stuff. If you saw last week, I talked about the sand and honey. Should I swatch these? Wait, let me just think. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I can try. Okay. This is the medium. Can you see it? And then this is the dark. I don't know. Can you see it even? It's sheer, but I'll use dark more on the exterior of my face, kind of like a bronzer, and then the medium on the interior of my face. Like I said, a little bit difficult to use because of the brush though. Okay, moving on to Hourglass. I picked these up and I used both of these on the last last week's video. The Veil Retouching Fluid. I like these a lot and I showed you a couple ways to use it that's a little bit different than the directions and then I've also, in the vein of uh, continuous improvement. If you've ever read the description for this channel, I'm continually trying products out in different ways to improve them in terms of performance and then maximizing what their potential is or and maximize the potential of a product. And so I also ended up, here I'll swatch these for you. Here's a sand, if you'd missed that one. Sand and honey. Sand and that's honey. So you can see the difference. What I've been doing to maximize this is I actually went one day without concealer, just using these, but not this alone. I also mixed in with sand this Naked Skin Color Correcting Fluid. Right, okay, drawing on everything right here. But what I'll do is I'll take this one and this sand and this and I'll mix it together and instead of using concealer, I'll just pat that on. And that really did the trick. I yeah, it wasn't exactly concealer, but it felt very lightweight and was really nice for like a no makeup makeup look and it stayed in place. And one of the things I like the most about this product, the Hourglass Veil Retouching Fluid, is the texture when it dries. It's almost like a very flat, so it doesn't have a raised texture. It's very flat on the skin and very thin. And the veil, I think, is a really good description of it. But if I mix these two colors together, sand and that can see and the corrector, then I get this color right here, and that is the perfect shade to put over any darkness. It works really well. Really happy I have those. Next, I picked up this Milk Makeup the Blur Stick, right? Why doesn't it say? Anyway, I believe this is the Blur Stick. It's supposed to blur your pores, and it's right here. Yeah, it doesn't really have a color. It didn't really blur anything on me. I don't know, maybe I'm not using it correctly, but I wasn't getting great results from it. This is a trial size, glad I bought a trial size. Again, I will continue to try it out, but so far it's not really making that much of a difference for me. I picked up, oh, more Clinique, the Bottom Lash 
mascara by Clinique, which is beautiful. I forgot how much I missed it. I've been trying to do my bottom lash mascara with just regular mascara and it's, it doesn't really do much for them. This really though brings out each eyelash on the bottom. I love this, so happy to have it back and I think it only comes in one color. Well, this one's in black. Speaking of face products, I wanted to just mention if you are taking any photos this summer, like at a wedding, or your own wedding, or guest of a wedding, or in my case, it was my 50th, my 50th. In this case, it was my parents' 50th anniversary, so we celebrated in Santa Barbara and we hired a professional photographer, and I think that's such a great idea because then you can really capture the moment without having someone in your party have to take the pictures, so I definitely think it's worth it, and I always make an album for my mom at the end of the year, which she loves, I just order it off Apple. I think that photos are really just something that our family treasures. And I wanted to tell you about the makeup that I used. Now I'll try and insert a couple of pictures here if you don't follow me on Instagram, but I used this Becca Backlight Priming Filter, and this really adheres makeup probably better than any other makeup, especially when you need it to hold for a while and in various conditions like being outside sometimes you get hot and sometimes your makeup will kind of run or melt but this kept everything in place so here it is on my arm great for my skin tone too so if you are concerned about that i also use the kevin aquant the sensual skin enhancer i just brought it because i knew i could count on although it looked a little bit too olivey when i put it on i asked my sister does this look right and she was like uh no you need to fix that so i just added some bronzing on top of it and it seemed to fix the problem but the finish on this is really beautiful so i've got sx 11 and 12 and this has lasted hmm, forever probably need to change it out here's sx 11 and sx 12. so you can see the difference in the colors there and i will blend them together to get the right tone, but if I add too much of this, then it gets too olivey. Couldn't have been happier with how my makeup turned out for that. Yeah, I was really happy with my makeup that day, and it was this product. So if you're a bride, mother of the bride, bridesmaid, wedding guest, this is really great, great makeup, especially if you are taking pictures in it. I don't wear it every day because I can feel it on my face. If I didn't, I probably would wear it every day, but it photographs really well. I also used this cheek gelée in the pictures because I wanted it to look really just as part of the skin and I've talked about this before. I've been using this every day as well. Really beautiful, warm color. I wanted to retouch on the Dior Show Blackout because I had some issues with it when I tried it on a couple weeks ago in a video and I solved the problem. So another thing I noticed is it does smudge on me. So if I just finish off with this and don't finish off with another mascara and then I do have an issue with smudging it'll end up kind of below my eyes so what I do is I go in with my primer then I go in with this and then I follow up with Maybelline Lash Sensational I think the comb on here I've talked about this before but it's more of that plasticky comb so it'll comb through any clumpiness and then also put another coat on the mascara so I know this doesn't transfer or smudge so it kind of coats this this one, this will build up the volume, but then this will separate a little bit and then also kind of seal it in so it doesn't smudge. So that's the way I've gotten this product to work best for me. A few more makeup items. I'm kind of all over the place today. have been loving this Chanel Eye Quad. It's the number 268. I think it was like limited edition, but I believe it's available currently now as their part of their collection. So these are great. They're all mattes. What I love doing the most is taking this color right here this lightest color, and then just taking a fluffy brush like this one, it's by Luxie 205, putting it in there and then just brushing it over my eyes and then a little bit into the crease and then going with eyeliner. And that's it. I really love this, this whole quad, but that's what I've been using the most is this lightest color here. Let's see, can I swatch that for you somewhere? I don't have anything that's left. Uh, let's see, here's the color that I just talked about. Can you see it right there? And then the second darkest color is right here. The next color, the darkest brown color is right here. And then finally we've got this color, that reddish color, really beautiful right there. Finally, a couple more, just a few nude lipstick suggestions because with the summer, I don't know about you, but I'd love to use more nude type lipsticks. So we've got the Tom Ford 
Uh, let's see, where can I swatch you? Right here. Tom Ford, Sable Smoke, if you haven't tried it before. What I love the most about this is that it has an opacity to it that most lighter lipsticks don't have, especially if you already have pigment to your lips. Love that one. The so next is by Hourglass. I've talked about this before, but it is the Girl Lip Stilo in Influencer. It's a little bit more sheer than the Tom Ford, and it has a little bit more moisture to it. And then finally, the Hourglass. I've never in the Confession, oh gosh, there are names I can never remember, but this one is I've never. As you can see, they're all very similar. This one's a bit more intense. It has more of a matte finish. It's not matte, but it's definitely more matte than the Girl Lip Stilo product. So love those. Moving on to skincare, I just wanted to share with you a couple of products my sister's friend her name's Sarita. She gifted me these and it's from Beauty Counter. It's the Brightening and Vitamin C Facial Oil and then also the Plumping and Jasmine Face Oil. So I have been using these daily and I really like how they feel on my skin and waiting to see results kind of on this one, really, for the brightening. See if I can get anything out of that. And also, she gifted me this cleansing balm, which I really like. So. And this one also, I think it's a brightening. I think I read something about this being a brightening thing as well. Giving these a try. I've never tried Beauty Counter, so I'm curious to see how they perform and then if there's anything else I would like to try, I'll, I'll give their website a little bit of a closer look. Let me know if you have tried this before any Beauty Counter items because it's definitely new to me. But thank you so much. I'm happy to give it a try and see See about the results. Yeah, one reason I don't like to film with my hair down is because I get these stray hairs that'll be in the middle of my face and I will have no idea until I edit, which is too late. If you've followed me for a while, you know I don't love samples because I think they just clutter things up, so I don't really like samples. I'll actually not select samples from Sephora sometimes because I just don't want to deal with the packaging and the waste and the fact that they just get lost and take up space, but I did find a little Clinique cleanser sample that I took with me on vacation and I really liked it. So it's the Clinique Liquid Facial Soap in Mild. It just did the job. It cleaned my makeup off. It was mild, just kind of like a basic cleanser. So if you're looking for a basic cleanser, I would recommend this one. It's really nice. It says, gentle effective cleansing developed by Clinique's dermatologist for the needs of skin dry in the cheeks, comfortable to oily, comfortable to oily in the T-zone. What? Comfortable to oily, let's read that again. Gentle effective cleansing developed by Clinique's dermatologist for the needs of skin dry in the cheeks, comfortable to oily in the T-zone. I don't know if I understand that sentence. Leave skin feeling fresh, clean, comfortable, non-drying. Use twice daily. Well, comfortable, they've used twice in here, so that must be something they're really going for. I don't know if I describe cleansing as comfortable, but okay. Really like this, so nice basic cleanser. Moving on to hair. Uh, this is another sample of results. So I try, I was looking for a hair oil to take with me on a quick trip to the Midwest and I found a living proof sample of the Restore Smooth Blowout Concentrate. So I picked up the actual size. Okay, so let me just walk you through my hair routine really quick so it makes more sense. First, I start off with the Thermal Root Lift and I spray it in the crown like seven times. Then I go ahead with the Oil Reflections by Wella and I will take about three pumps and I will put it through half of my hair down here. Then I go in with the Living Proof product and I put it in the bottom half again of my hair, about three pumps. I blow dry the crown up, so I face the blow dryer up and I blow it this way. And then I just rough dry the rest of my hair and that's it for the whole evening. And I actually sometimes skip this step and then just go in with this and let it air dry. What it does is gets rid of that flyaway frizziness that can happen at the ends. I don't know why I didn't try this before, but it says ideal for coarse, thick hair types, which I have thick hair, not much of it, but each strand is very thick. So this is really great if you have hair like me and sometimes you get that like, 
I don't know, frizziness, dryness at the ends, and you want it just to kind of look like it's all continuous in terms of the healthiness. It's really healthy at the top, but then sometimes the bottom is a little bit more dry. This is a really great product. So you don't even have to blow dry it. You can just put in your hair and then it keeps that shape. So really, really happy with it. And that is it for my favorites. We had a lot of stuff. Let me know if you like these longer ones or if you'd rather me just kind of edit it down to just a few items. Let me know if you like longer or shorter videos. Either way, I'm happy to do those for you. I think those are my favorite videos to watch and also to make. So if you have any other favorites that I should know about, please let me know. And if you haven't subscribed already, I'd appreciate it. If you have, thank you so much. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'll see you next time. Thanks.